That's that's a key component for human thinking. And that's fine. It's not enough. The missing piece is who you're being as you are doing. The two of them come together to create the wholeness of you. Welcome to another episode of the Love to Move podcast, where we take a look at all the definitions of the word move and tell you why we love them. Now, today we're talking about moving towards abundance, and and this word has kind of used a lot in in this idea of finding abundance in money, finding abundance in relationships and love, finding abundance in your life. My guest today is Elaine Sterling, and she and I shared a TEDx stage, actually, a little over a year ago. And on that stage, she talked about abundance. She talked about her story with having a stroke that seemed to come out of nowhere, and seem to not really leave a trace except for this mission, this uh, really unique story that's going to, to some of you will seem a little woo-woo, but it's truly a magnificent story of what put her on this path towards helping and educating people around abundance. And guys, when it comes down to it, it is a choice, right? It is a choice, but we really get deep into why it is a choice. And so Elaine has been on this journey And she's talking about helping people finding the joy and finding abundance in their lives. This really can feel a little woo-woo, but honestly takes some fantastic turns from the more scientific to the more application-based things. And I really want you to wait all the way until the end because at the very end, Elaine gives you an exact framework, a five-step framework of how you can get abundance and activate abundance in any relationship or action in your life. And if you start to actually use this, even on one thing, one relationship in your life, I guarantee, because I've been doing this a little since the episode, changes everything. Changes everything, and where you feel that you were powerless, it shows you that you're still in control of your reactions. So if you are willing to transform your life into incredible amounts of abundance, please join me in welcoming Elaine Starling. to see you again. I love chatting with you. And this is just the perfect thing for today. I, this is the first time that we get to take a, a take two because we got interrupted by a power surge <laughs> last time. I never went back and listened to the recording. I do wonder we kind of when it cut off. That'd be very funny to, <laughs> to see what, what happened there. But uh, we're, we're going to dive right on in. Um, people heard in the intro that we're going to be talking about abundance and, and you are very much uh, the expert around it, and I, I loved hearing you talk about it from the stage that you and I shared at TEDx Grandview Heights a little over a year ago, uh, yeah. which was a whole interesting, interesting time. And you and I both went through this long process of of the TEDx, and people kind of view it as ooh. And until you go behind the curtain and you actually become a speaker, um, you think it's very magical until you see how much hard work <laughs> goes into it. And it's not as everybody's just born a TEDx speaker in that sense. Can you tell us a little bit about what that process was like for you uh, as far as becoming a TEDx speaker and going through developing your speech? Yeah, it was it was a, a real adventure. And it started when I saw my first TED Talk and I was just blown away by it. I was like, wow, I want to do that someday. I had no idea what I would talk about. I had no idea what it would be like, but it's like, that is so cool. And I love that it's short, it's concise, it's compelling, it's interesting, it's engaging. I want to do that. And, you know, years later, I was blessed to meet Roger Killen, our mutual coach, um, at a networking event, an online networking event during, uh, before all the COVID stuff hurt, hit, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was really interested in what he did and how he taught people about TEDx talks and how to do it, what was involved, kind of what to prepare for, because it's not like a regular talk. If you've done public speaking, a TEDx talk is a different structure. And so it's a it's a different animal. It really helps to work with somebody who knows that particular genre. And so I took his class and I was really impressed with everything he was doing. And I knew I needed a coach to help me craft my talk itself, craft the speech. And so I worked with Roger and his business partner, Dorothea Hendricks. And the two of them were really awesome as a team to work with. But I got to tell you, there were some bumpy spots because, you know, it never failed. As soon as I felt like, yeah, I nailed it. 
I'm just, man, this is good. It's hanging together so great. And it just flows. Oh, no, 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 no. They'd like tore it apart and lovingly, but they would say, mm, no. <laughs> and so it it took a while. It It's kind of like the rebus puzzles, if you're at all familiar with those, where it's like symbols, but it means something. And at first your brain is just like, huh? I have no idea what you're talking about. And after you get in the rhythm of it, all of a sudden it makes sense and you see it and you get the joke inside it. And it was like that for me and working with Roger and Dorothea on really wrapping my head around the structure and how the flow of the content needed to happen. And so it was wonderful when it all came together. And then even better was when I got to meet you and everybody else who was going to be sharing the stage. And we all practiced together. And we all wanted each of the people on stage to do fabulously well. And so having that support group Having talented professionals who know as an audience how you're doing, how you resonate, and they can give you some concrete feedback and suggestions lovingly given with the idea that they want you to be successful, that was incredibly powerful. So yeah, the entire experience was a major growth learning experience and vital for where I am in my business because I had been struggling to figure out how do I explain what I do? And going through this process really provided a foundation that explains this is kind of the ba the basis of everything that I do. And it's great to be able to refer people to my TED Talk. I've got a little over 280,000 views so far, and my goal is 10 million. So I'm on my way. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, I think what I what I like you saying there, and I, I think this is true for any public speaking, but I think the TEDx process exposes you to this as well. Um, uh, Roger had something, I believe he called it sacred cows, but it, it's the stories that we keep sacred for ourselves. And we think that they are so important, so important. And he goes, does this actually relate to the talk? And will the audience relate with the story? And I think that a lot of it was also crafting. This is not a talk for you. This is a talk <laughs> for your audience. Similarly, something that was very interesting that you don't consider, um, as a speaker is you are not talking to the audience in the, um, in the, uh, theater you were actually talking to the camera because we were even taught and then we were trained of, of saying the amount of people you reach in the actual internet universe is going to be so much more than, than in that theater. And I mean, so we had maybe a, a little over a hundred or however many people was just yeah. the, the pandemic in the theater and you're over 280,000 now, you could not have fit anywhere <laughs> near that amount, no. even a fraction <laughs> of that amount in there. And so this is amazing that, that you were, you were able to reach so many people with that. I'm wondering, as as that shifted and shaped for you, do you feel like it also kind of changed your your business a little bit at all? Did it because you got the clarity? You were going, okay, this is how I communicate what I do. Did it at any point make you go, well, why don't I do this as well? Did it shift any of those things for you? You know, for me, it was um, more of an opportunity to be very open and direct about what I do mm -hmm. because <laughs> I have kind of a unique niche that I occupy. I work with people who really crave spiritual growth and I help them receive divine guidance very clearly so they can create the financial abundance they want. It's one of those things where there's a missing piece and people don't realize that they're guided all the time by the divine. You're actually in partnership with the divine and everything is set up for you to succeed. The only problem is you're human. <laughs> hey, there's always a catch. And because you're human and you want to control everything and you want all the logic and sequence and organization and structure and, and you've got to have it make sense and have a guarantee, we tend to put the wrong parameters, the wrong evaluation around everything we do. And as a consequence, we're disappointed by the results that show up. And so getting clear on my message and having a message that was TEDx friendly it still has a disclaimer at the top saying, well, this is her opinion, but it's not the official opinion of TEDx. You know, they have to do that because I am talking about mindset in my TED talk. Um, and I go into a spiritual message with the people that I talk to and it doesn't resonate for everybody. It's not a religious message. Uh, it's not for the kingdom folks. This is really a foundational message of what is hidden there in plain sight that you didn't know was there that's actually there to serve you and help you. And so it gave me the confidence I needed 
to be willing to step out and own that spiritual message. And that was a big, big growth step for me because I kept trying to kind of hide it. It's like, oh, it's really a person message. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Do you feel that sometimes people, they may not use those words of spiritual or whatever it might be. And and you talk to them and you go, oh no, this is the spirit. What you're talking about, what you're trying to tell me is you need, you're seeking this spiritual guidance. You may yeah. be not saying it. You may be using different words, like saying the universe, the general vibe. I had an intuitive feeling. I just, I felt it in my gut. And you're like, you're saying the same things. Uh, but you're just not willing to put the label of spirituality on it because somehow whatever that word word may mean for you. Do you find that a lot of people kind of, they bounce around that idea, but they you really help them connect that dot? I think that for people who are really into spiritual growth, they immediately want to know what happened and, and what I learned from the divine during my stroke. Mm -hmm. For people who are more on the fence, they're more in the personal growth and entrepreneurial realm, um, a lot of them are also spiritual too, but they have to start with a business context. And so it's interesting that everything I do, there's a foundation of spirituality that reassures you you're in the right space. You're doing the right thing. You really can't screw this up. I mean, really, you really can't. And so when you have that level of confidence that you're going to do fine. It's just a matter of understanding what you're seeing and you're experiencing so you can leverage it more effectively. Then that spills over into personal growth. That spills over into your business life because guess what? Especially if you're an entrepreneur, the big differential in your business is you and how you show up. And how you show up is a function of that spiritual thing that I'm talking about. So it's all one and the same and different people use different language to describe what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I start where people are. Um, you know, for example, I have a free gift, um, five steps to online abundance. And it's really talking about how you can reach out to people online, add value, because when you give is when you receive. And so it's kind of talking about online networking. And that can be a business message for people. Let's, because you've mentioned it, and I, I feel like we we have to go into the story, of course. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, of giving a business uh, context, I know that there is a business context to it, as well as the, the entire uh, story is also got its spiritual part of it as well. Let's go back to uh, one and a half decades, a little more than that, ago, to, to that New Year's uh, time uh, of the story of your stroke. Um, can sure. you paint the scene? You talk about this in your TEDx talk, but you don't go into as much detail as as you had before and as I've heard it. And I, I would love to hear more of the details of the whole story of that time. Absolutely. Well, it was very interesting because I had my own company. I uh, negotiated advertising deals for high tech companies, primarily in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I worked with a lot of Fortune 500 companies at the C-suite level. And my business was doing OK, but I found that it was they were squeezing me on price and everything was costing more and I was working nonstop and I was really getting burned out. And at my birthday, I told my husband, you know, I feel kind of guilty that I want more out of my life because honestly, I'm so blessed in so many different areas of my life. If I got hit by a bus tomorrow, I could die happy. Really? I feel I feel badly that I want something more, that something about my business just isn't working. So you know what? I'm going to stop thrashing. I'm going to be grateful for what I have, and I'm just going to deal. That's it. I'm just going to deal. One month later, New Year's Day, 2005, on vacation in New Zealand. I've been off the plane for over a week, and I have a stroke on New Year's Day. And during my stroke, I have a conversation with our higher power. I got a complete download on how everything works, why we're alive what we're supposed to be doing while we're alive, how we can live our best possible life and what happens next after this life. I always tell people, don't worry about that part because it's actually a graduation. It's not an ending, not by any stretch of the imagination. It's kind of like the difference between kindergarten and first grade. I don't know about you, but when I was in kindergarten, there was nap time and first grade, no more nap time. Well, when you're physical, you have a body and when you're not physical, you don't have a body, but there's a whole lot more going on and it's all really good and it's all really interesting, but don't worry about that because really you're here to focus on the physical aspect of being human 
And this is what you're here to do. So it was magical. It was amazing. It was wonderful. And I got a little chapped too, because I was like, you know, it would have been so nice to know this umpty um years ago. And you had to wait this long to explain this to me. What the heck? <laughs> and the message I got back was great. You need to summarize and organize this so that other people can understand it and implement it and experience what you experienced without the stroke part. And I was like, ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> I don't think so. And it was interesting. I came out of the stroke with no damage at all. In fact, I was checked out by doctors where I live in Sacramento and also at Stanford University, and they can't tell that anything happened. As far as they can tell, I never had a stroke. But it turns out when the divine wants to have a conversation with you, they're going to have a conversation with you. And I spent the following 10 years helping my parents and my in-laws with end-of-life issues, closing my old business, and really figuring out, how do I explain this thing? Because it felt like I'd swallowed Google whole. I mean, all the video, all the keywords, all the links, all the likes, all the everything. And now I have to make sense out of this and make it concise. Holy mackerel. Well, that's why I was so grateful also to do the TED Talk, because with that, I explain really the foundation of, of my course, The Abundance Journey, which is all about your intention, how you want to feel in the present moment, and your attention, what you're focused on. Those are the two variables that you control that changes everything in your life and opens you up to receive more abundance. So I'm really passionate about spreading the word because so many people don't realize what they can do to live a better life. And you so deserve it. Absolutely. For those listeners that might be a little bit more spiritually inclined, you said it yourself that those tend to be like, what was it like? What was the conversation like? I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you. You say you conversed. <laughs> I'm sure, obviously, it's not quite as, well, let's sit down at a table and let's have a conversation and record this podcast for the rest of the you know <laughs> dimensions and the other divine to listen to. Um, was it, and given the just the amount of information, was it just kind of this continuous flood, hard to put into words, uh, exchange of information. What what was that process like, the communication piece? Well, it was very, very interesting because um, when I had the stroke, uh, my right arm went numb and the right side of my face went numb. And that's how it was a key sign that I was having a stroke. And so my husband walked me to a little medical center and they gave me an aspirin and they asked me to describe a poster on the wall. And I knew exactly what they said and I knew exactly what it was. But the words that came out of my mouth made no sense. And they were doing all these little tests. And they're like, you're having a stroke. <laughs> That's what's happening. And finally, there was nothing else that they were doing with me. And I was just really tired. I didn't feel bad at all. I felt fine. I was just really tired. I felt kind of like a lazy Saturday morning where you can hit the snooze alarm, roll over and go back to sleep. I just wanted to take a nap, you know, just oh, chill. And finally, they let me relax. And as soon as I relaxed, I immediately felt myself in this massive cloud. And I was a part of the cloud and it was part of me. And it was sentient. And I felt this voice say, oh, that's perfect. And I knew that somehow it was talking about me. And I was like, I don't think so. I haven't solved world hunger. I don't speak multiple languages. I haven't climbed Mount Everest. I'm not all that. And I got this message back. No, no, no. You don't understand. We created you with all of your skills, your talents, your abilities, your preferences, your interests, all of that along with your faults, your foibles, your hot buttons, your issues, your problems. We wanted all of that combined to make the perfect version of you. This is perfect. And all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. I was like, well, this is kind of weird. And then I had the sense that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to a higher presence here. And so, you know, it's unavoidable. We live our life through questions it's like, uh, do I have enough gas in the car to get to the work? Um, what do I feel like for dinner? You know, our entire life is questions. And so immediately questions would come up. And as soon as a question appeared from me, the answer was given to me in my body. 
past, present, future, every color of the rainbow and those we can't see, everything all in one fell swoop, like boom, there it is, the answer to my question. So it was it was intense, but it was also really fun. It was like I was at this incredible mixer and there were other spirits moving around and I could sense other things in the room. I realized later that that cloud that I experienced were atoms. I was I was feeling and seeing and experiencing atoms. And that's why I was a part of the cloud and the cloud was a part of me. And I was off in this alcove with the divine having this conversation. And I didn't want to get distracted by all the other stuff that was going on and all the other beings that were around. I really wanted to get answers to my question. And it was such a fun conversation. I, I got to tell you, I have never experienced such an overwhelming sensation of devout love and approval and appreciation. It was like a Niagara Falls of love and just bathing in it, soaking in it. And wow, what an experience. I, I do want to share a tip with everybody, if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know I get a little enthusiastic and I just sort of keep going. So interrupt me when you want to change the conversation. But so one of the things that after I came out of the stroke and I got home from my vacation, I was like, man, that whole Niagara Falls of love thing. I want two of those anytime I want. I, I want a spigot where I can just turn it on and I can have that. Forget the stroke part. Just give me that unconditional love. And so I started researching, how do you get that connection going? And everything said, you've got to allow. You've got to just allow. Open yourself up and allow. So I was allowing, I was allowing, I'm allowing my little heart out, you know. And every once in a while, I'd get a great download. And it always felt really good. But it was more like a partially plugged watering can, frankly, than Niagara Falls. It was there but it wasn't in the volume that I was after. And so finally, I was sitting for guidance one morning, kind of meditating, and I asked the divine the question, why isn't this allowing thing working for me? Because I'm allowing like crazy here. And I got this immediate message back, what comes to mind? What's the image that you think of as soon as you think of the word allowing? And immediately I saw myself behind a door with a chain on the door, and I'm peeking out the door at the divine and I'm really nervous and I'm really anxious. And I realized that for me, the word allow is a mind-based word. And the human mind wants structure and order and control and, you know, guarantees and all that. And yeah, that's not the kind of relationship that I want to have with the divine. I want an open-hearted relationship with the divine. So clearly for me, the word allow just wasn't the right word. And so I really thought about it for a long time. And I finally realized that the word for me is welcoming. Mm -hmm. I welcome the divine. I welcome abundance. I welcome other people. I welcome blessings. I don't have to know what they are. I don't have to control them. They can just show up. And I took the door off the hinges and chucked the door. Who needs it? The divine's on your side. The divine is there to help you and guide you and create everything with you because you're in partnership with the divine, everything that you want. So it's pretty darn cool. And things are just in flow now. And that's what I really want for everybody. I really like that tip because I, I think it it speaks very well to your point before that you were created with with your gifts and your talents and skills and also your flaws, because a lot of times people go, well, I can't be the best. You're not meant to be, you are defining the best by your, with your own flaws and your own thoughts of what the best is. Um, and maybe you didn't fix world hunger, but what if you inspire the abundance in somebody who will fix world hunger? <laughs> then did you, I think you technically did fix world hunger. So, <laughs> and, and the same thing with these words is that the word that you may use, somebody else might say, I prefer to search for abundance and search for the divine. And so they're going to swing that door open and run out through in, into the unknown and explore whatever that might be for them. That might be some people might be afraid to go outside. Um, I know a couple of people like that. Uh, and so they'll be like, no, just keep the door closed. I don't even want to peek through. No, nope, just that's fine. <laughs> I'll look out the window every now and again, uh, whatever it might be. And I think it just it speaks to this point that 
even if the message may sound the same, the fact that we may say it a little differently, maybe received a little bit differently this way um, and that way, we don't need to get bogged down into the one perfect absolute way of doing it. Because I don't think with your experience, we couldn't even comprehend perfect because no. obviously we don't see it in ourselves. <laughs> There was a very steep learning curve. <laughs> it sounds like it. And that's kind of the, the other piece that I'm interested in is Niagara Falls of Love feels like something you could get swept away in. And some people may go, well, then you just never come out. You never come out to live. You're just in, in this hole of love. Uh, but I'm sure it's not as if you're swept away in the currents. It's more that you're filled by these currents to yes. then go and kind of shine the unis that you yeah. are out in, into the world, whatever that might be. Is that kind of more appropriate? Absolutely. You're completely empowered by the divine. See, the, the thing that I think a lot of people get confused over is they think the divine is up here and they're down here on the bottom and they're begging for crumbs and they're hoping and wishing that the divine or the God of their understanding will somehow hear them and shine on them. But that's not really what's happening. So just to clarify, one of the messages that I received, from the divine perspective, absolutely everything is love. Everything is love. And from our perspective, there can be disasters. There can be horrible conversations that are really upsetting. There can be terrible things that happen in our lives and trauma that happens because of different situations. So we see contrast. The divine doesn't see contrast. The divine can only experience love. So in order for the divine to expand and grow, they created us because they needed us with our contrast. We see black and white, hot and cold, yes and no, right and wrong, blah, you know, all of it. We see the extremes. And because we tend to focus on the extremes, that means we pretend that love is not all there is. And that means that we are constantly guided and encouraged to lean in with more love in every moment, show up as more love for ourselves and for others, notice the love that's already present. And honestly, it's a lot like a scavenger hunt. It's always there for you. It's not always obvious. And that's deliberate because the divine's trying to get your attention and trying to get you to really notice the love that's there for you. And every time we come together, we actually collaborate to create even more love. That's what we're doing through this interview, through this conversation. Mm -hmm. So when you realize that that's what you do, this is the cutting edge of the divine. This is how the divine expands and grows. So you're actually in partnership with the divine. This is not a you're better or worse. No, this is you are an equal partner with the divine. And that's why you've got like this stadium of light and they're all rooting for you and cheering you on and yes please we want you to be successful we want you to love your life and it's up to us to clear out the debris so that more divine can flow through us as us and we are actually expressing that divine love through everything we think feel say and do that's another thing that i want to share with you i'm going off on a little tangent but this is a good tangent. You're going to like this tangent a lot. This is one of my absolute favorite books. Mm -hmm. The book is called Connected, The Surprising Power of Our Social Networks and How They Shape Our Lives. Really cool book. It's been out for a while. And what I love about this book, it's uh, written by two social scientists who teach at the college level. They've done a ton of research. They want to find out just how much influence do we have over each other in our relationships? And how does that all happen? How does that come together? Well, in the book, they talk about something called the three degrees of influence rule. And according to this rule, you have influence over your friends, friends, friends. Mm -hmm. That was a little surprising to me. I mean, I figured you'd have influence over your friends and maybe they would talk about you to their friends. So, okay. This, no, three levels away from you. I was like, wow, that's really interesting. But what does that mean? Like, let's quantify that. How significant is that? And so I asked Dr. Google, and she showed me a recently published uh, article in the New York Times that cited some research that says the average American knows about 600 people. 
And I thought, man, that's a lot of people. I don't think I know 600 people. I talked to a couple of friends and they're like, oh, that's really low. Oh, you know, way more. I was like, okay, I don't think so. But hey, I didn't do the math. The researchers did the math. Let's pretend that they have the right number. Okay, just so we can thought experiment and see where this goes. So if we assume that 600 is the right number, imagine a bullseye where you're at the center of the bullseye. And that first ring right around you is those 600 people that you know. Well, every single one of those 600 people knows 600 people. That's 360,000 people. And every single one of those 360,000 people knows 600 people. That's 217 million people. So according to these scientists, you have influence over 217 million, 360,000, 600 people. Every single thing you think, feel, say, or do, you being you is the most powerful thing you can do. Now, the numbers hopefully didn't really freak you out that much, thought experiment. Now I'm going to freak you out. And I always reference this because if you get the hard copy of the book, it's on page 54. And I couldn't believe it when I read this. Just amazing. So when you're having a good day, the people in that first ring, that 600 people that you know, are 15% more likely to have a good day just because you are having a good day. And that 360,000 people in the second ring are 10% more likely to have a good day just because you're having a good day. And that 217 million people that you know for sure you don't know, and there's no way in the world you could influence them, they are 6% more likely to have a great day just because you are having a great day. So we don't understand what a huge difference we make when we show up, but we do. And honestly, don't worry about when you have a not so great day, because it's kind of like dodgeball. Nobody wants it. They're like, yeah, forget that. <laughs> I'll pass. Right. So it's OK. And the other thing to remember is you're connected to so many people. Many of them are having a fabulous day. And now that you've listened to or watched this experience here, you're connected to our energy. And we tend to be pretty high vibe people. So if you're not having a great day. Think about us, think about this conversation, and boom, you will lift your energy. It's that fast, and it's that easy. I want to get your take on something. Um, yeah. So as this is based off of the fact that if uh, from the aspect of the divine, we are almost these, I will use my word, this was not your word, to be fair. We are almost these filters for love of where we're we're filtering out the, oh, okay, this is this is love. Okay, no, see, that's not, now let me let me be a little bit more discerning and try to figure <laughs> that out, the contrast that you were talking about. I, um, I have always liked this quote. I've said it myself. I didn't really, I, maybe somebody else has said it, but I personally have always thought I made it up myself. Um, maybe not, who knows? But I, I've, I've kind of said, um, if you say that you're going to have a good day, you're telling yourself you're going to have a bad day because you're, like you said, you're setting up the contrast. Because if you just said that all days are days, there's no such thing as a good day and there's no such thing as a bad day, well, then there you go. But as soon as you label something as a good day, that means something will have to be labeled as a bad day because otherwise there's no contrast. But in, I see what you're saying. Right. But what I think what I'm really <laughs> saying there is that's our inability to find the good in the bad days is the fact that we just go, well, it's just all shit. Um, it's just a horrible day. Everything is awful. There's no way anything good could ever happen. It's a bad day. And so we put this identity on the day where, well, not everything that happened today was bad. That's not necessarily true. Maybe your experience and the majority of it, maybe some bad things did happen. But as a whole, maybe there were some other good things that happened. Um, and that's that's where we kind of need to learn to discern because we can only control ourselves, not the situations and things that happen to us. Absolutely. Yeah, so and what's your take on, on, on that? Yeah, my take on it is you're setting an intention for how you want your day to go. And I notice it's really interesting. People will say, okay, I want to change. I want something good to happen for me. I want a New York Times bestseller. Who, baby? This is going to be really exciting. And they start down that path and the energy starts to move, but it's unfamiliar energy because they haven't done this before. And it's something they want, but it's a little scary because they haven't done this before. And since they haven't done it before, they can't control it. They don't know what to expect. They don't have that logical sequence and all of everything dotted and crossed and you know tied up with a bow. And so they freak themselves out when the energy starts to move and they gravitate to the familiar. 
and they cling to what they already had in the past. And then because they didn't get that growth, because they were afraid of the opportunity to grow, then they beat themselves up. It's the same stuff every day. Mm -hmm. And so we can trap ourselves, that human aspect of us. We have the choice. We can choose to insist on being right all the time, that it's only my way and it's all about me and it's only my way. Or we can be receptive and open and just willing to let things flow. One of the things that's been really interesting for me, things just flow to me. And it's amazing how quickly they flow. So I have seen tons of research about how important meditation is for your health and well-being. And one of my initiatives for this year is to really do a lot to support my physical health. So I felt like I really need to find a meditation practice that works for me. I'm aware of a lot of them, but they just didn't have any appeal, frankly. So I'm reading this book that I felt guided to read. It's called The Secret Mean uh, the secret, uh, what was it? The secret uh, messages in feelings. And I love the book, really great book. There's one sentence in the entire book where this guy mentions a specific meditation practice. And it felt like there was a spotlight right there in the book, like neon sirens, whoop, 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 pay attention to this. So I thought, okay, got it, got my attention. So I copy, I put it into Google, I did a search on it, and I found some people who practiced that meditation methodology, and they were doing a little free orientation over Zoom. So I signed up for it, and these guys happened to be in Wisconsin. Turned out I was the only person who signed up for the orientation. I felt a little bad about that, but hey, I, it was a great conversation. They did a few exercises with me. I really liked it. I'm like, man, I would love to do the training the problem is they're in Wisconsin. And at the time, the, the weather was horrible and all these flights were being canceled. I'm like, man, I'm in Sacramento, California. Going to Wisconsin really isn't an option for me right now. And I was so hoping that I could learn how to do this really soon. And the very next day, one of the guys who was at the orientation sent me an email with a link to a group in Sacramento that was doing the training the next weekend. So when you have a clear intention, I want to improve my health. Oh, meditation is the way to go. Oh, I could check out this kind of meditation. Oh, I really like that meditation. How do I do one near me? Woo, here's one near me. And it's next weekend. <laughs> I mean, these kinds of things just start to flow to you. And when you're willing to accept that you are guided and relish and cherish the game, that you're playing with the divine because you got to know the divine is just like told you, told you, told you, told you, told you, told you, you know, I, I experienced the divine as super playful and silly and effervescent joy, just mm -hmm. over the top, outrageous, ridiculous joy. And so that's the kind of stuff that happens to me all the time. And when you can relax into that and enjoy it, you don't need to control it. It's like you've got this massive pile of presents everywhere you look, and it doesn't matter what order you open them in. It's all brilliant. I love it. I and <laughs> I, I I just think of it because I just had uh, my my son, and I think about the joy and the light, and and I I notice um, my mom does it, my wife that I do it. We all do it. We put these human adult things and interpretations of uh, on things that babies do like oh look he didn't like us saying that he doesn't know what you said he can't understand you he's just he's either happy or upset he's just gleeful whatever it might be we put all on, on all these things and all these these other filters about all the different meanings with that what i wanted to ask is you kind of mentioned this idea which i think is so so interesting we want that we want to change and we have this thing of what well, would say i want to become the new york times bestseller and then there's this energy that's unfamiliar because we've never done it before how do you kind of talk people through or or help people along sometimes when we want to change we see the result thing and we go that's what i want but that not may not be really what we want maybe it's that feeling of being accepted maybe it's that feeling of wanting the safety of the fact that you've sold so many books that now you're rich and you don't have to worry about money you don't actually want the bestseller title. That doesn't, it's something that it means to you besides just being the bestseller. 
Do you usually find that you have to talk through what is that other underlying thing? Because that's really what you're chasing. And the divine knows that's what you want. So it goes, I'm not giving you the bestseller. I'm giving you a faster <laughs> option to getting the feeling that you want. Is that kind of, am I getting at the right thing? It's kind of, uh, there's a couple of different things going on here. So there's something that I like to call, yeah, baby, energy. And it's when you show up and you're excited and you're curious and you're interested and you're just ready to go. You know, you don't have all the answers and you don't care that you don't have all the answers. You know that you're capable and resourceful and you can Google stuff and you can ask people and you'll figure it out. So you don't stress over the details. It's like, just show me. Let's have this conversation. Bring it on, baby. I am so ready. Let's play. And when you're in that space, that let's play space, you're much more open to receive. Mm -hmm. So that's a really, really useful thing to be open to receive. Now, the second thing, I know you've heard this expression, the joy is in the journey. And it used to piss me off every time I hear it because it's like, it's not, it's in, I want to win the lottery, damn it. That's not what it's all about. It's truly about noticing the blessings that are present for you right now. Gratitude is the doorway that opens everything else you want in your life. If you can't be grateful for the blessings that you're receiving in this moment, you're not ready for the blessings you claim you want. So look at the baby steps. Look at your progress, not the end result. Because you've actually accomplished a great deal to get to where you are right now. And when you recognize all the things that you've done that have led you and guided you and created the present circumstance and all of the new opportunities that are starting to show up for you and choices that you can make that align with your intention, all the things that are working well in your attention, all of a sudden you feel this momentum and you feel this movement and you're guided effortlessly towards exactly what is the perfect experience for you. It doesn't really matter what your goal is. The objective is to get you in action and to get you moving. There's always the expression, uh, you can't guide a parked car. You can't steer a parked car, right? So you need to get in action. And I've always heard that that goal that you have is not a distant shore. It's just a guiding light. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So let something be your intention and know that it's fine if your intention changes. If the goals that you have for your life shift and grow, that's what they're supposed to do because there's always more love for you. There's always more for you. And when you lean in with that excitement and that just delight, that yeah, baby energy, that's when things really happen. Mm. I love it because we, we get so stuck trying to be perfect. We don't realize we are perfect. Yeah. Um, and so we, yeah. we, don't, we don't take those motions. And it's really interesting that you say that you, you've heard this cliche. I've had a very interesting experience, especially over the last maybe six months or so with the universe and cliches. Um, and because you hear these cliches, and you go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've realized that until a very specific thing happens to you, that really makes you experience why that is a cliche. And then you go, how do I summarize this? And you go through the cliche, that's <laughs> but, but you will never truly understand the meaning of it until it happens to you. And then you go, yep, cool. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, so, and it's absolutely, and so many people will absolutely go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy the journey. I'm, I'm tired of this journey. Sorry, until you feel it, you, I, that's all we can really tell you. It's you, you have to experience it, but the only way you're going to get through that, like Elaine said, is through the action part of it. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of kind of taking more action, um, your your TEDx talk and everything is about abundance. And we yes. kind of skirted a little bit around the word abundance here and there. Um, let's really get into it, because that's the thing that you're trying to help people is to shift their mindset, shift their attention and intention more towards this abundance side of things. Can you tell us, well, why is that so important as opposed to maybe just being content? Oh, no, 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 no. You're here for much bigger things and much bigger than you realize, much bigger than you know. And so I think one of the things that most people get confused about is they're really focused on the doing. What do I need to do? Give me the next step. 
What's the action I can take? And that is a very human mental thing to do because we really like to have structure and order and sequence and logic and rationale and, you know, evaluation criteria and guarantees and all that stuff. That's, that's a key component for human thinking. And that's fine. It's not enough. The missing piece is who you're being as you are doing. The two of them come together to create the wholeness of you. And so often people are feeling desperate, feeling needy, feeling under the gun, feeling like it's all on their shoulders to figure it out, feeling like they have no clue what they're doing and they're just doing the best they can. And that kind of beingness that you're adding to your doingness, it's, have you ever been in a car with somebody who drives with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake? I had that experience one time and it almost gave me whiplash. <laughs> this poor guy, every time he got over like 30 miles an hour, man, he'd slam on the brakes. <laughs> I'd be like clutching the front. I was like, oh, <laughs> it was really terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. And you do that to yourself all the time. It's no wonder you've scared yourself silly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a, a, so important that you understand what you are doing and who you are being at the same time. Because everything that you do, you are being something at the same time. You can't separate who you are and what you do. They're one and the same. So when you understand what's happening and you understand that your intention, how you want to feel and how you want others to feel every time they think about you or spend time with you, that intention combined with your attention on what is working in the moment, finding all those little Easter eggs and all those hidden gifts and blessings, that's when things really start to move for you and more abundance shows up for you. And when I'm talking about abundance, like I was talking about that yeah, baby energy, that experience, that emotion is truly what you want, no matter what physical, tangible thing shows up. The reason why you want the gorgeous house is because you want to feel that yeah, baby energy. You want the awesome car? Yeah, baby. You want the rocking wife? Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's what you want, right? So if you can get the yeah, baby energy first, that is what is so magnetic and so compelling that it creates the path to the physical, tangible thing that you want. Everything you want to experience is so you can have that emotion. So have the emotion first. Absolutely. And I think that the more and more you see it, all the, all the, all the rich people, you find that you can take away the riches and the ones that are actually happy, that it doesn't matter to them because that is a result of the yeah, baby energy not what the cause of the yeah baby energy and they have so much fun creating that they're perfectly fine losing it all because they'll do it again easy peasy yeah what i really liked in your explanation of it is this this uh, the intention and the attention which you've been saying which you you would give really actionable steps around how to apply it um in your in the tedx talk and the, the thing that I like is that a lot of people will go identity, you know, they use some of those buzzwords of where, and you're saying being, you're saying very similar things, but again, we're coming back to this idea of you're saying it in a different way that hopefully people go, oh, that clicks with me, that yeah. I understand. And the reason I like it is because what you're, you're saying, these are both things that are completely in our control and they are, what you're paying attention to is entirely in your control. You can, you know, scoff at the amount of social media is trying to pull your attention away from you. Sure. But it's still in your control. And your intention is also in your control because many people will say, well, I want to have something nice, but I don't have the money to buy myself something nice, but you can still control your intention and your attention around it. I'm sure that when it comes to abundance, when it comes to these things, money is always just one of those things that people have a really hard time with. I'm guessing that's yeah. one where people go, but I just, I will be more attentive and uh, intentional and uh, abundant when I have more money. Uh, do, you, do you have any kind of wise words around when it comes to money? Because money struggles, they're tough. They're, they're different situations for different people. And it, it can be really kind of hard to overcome. So the problem is the money you're after is the tip of the tail at the end of the dog. That's not where it starts. People always think, I want revenue. I want money just raining down on me like crazy. And when the revenue's there, my reputation is going to be number one. I won't even have to pick up the phone to call people. People will be ordering so constantly. 
I will have all I can do to keep up with all the orders that come in because everybody's going to know about me and they're all going to want to buy from me. And when my reputation's there, oh, I'm going to have these incredible relationships with people I've admired for years. Oprah on speed dial, BFFs forever, man. You know, all these people. And then you push them and you're like, okay, so what else would you get? What else could happen? What else would you like? And they go, wow, well, um, I have to think a long time. And finally, they get to rewarding experiences. And every once in a while, I'll just get this glimpse of how what I'm doing is making a massive contribution and a difference in the world. And I'll feel totally aligned in who I am and what I do. And I'll, I'll really create this incredibly rewarding experience for myself and for the people that I serve. But I don't get to have that all the time. That's just a once in a lifetime fluke. Mm -hmm. Well, baby, you're starting at the wrong end. You start with the rewarding experience. You start with your own gifts and talents and what you love to do and the problems that you can solve for other people. And when you create an incredibly rewarding experience, that's what inspires people to have a relationship with you. You get them, you value them, you can help them, you can serve them and they want more of you. And guess what? You don't control your reputation. Your relationships will tell everyone who you are being for them. What you control are your standards and how you show up, who you're being. Remember having that conversation about who you're being? That's what you control. And when your rewarding experience is there, your, re your relationships are there, and your reputation is there, the revenue is a byproduct. It's unavoidable. So instead of beating yourself up of, I need money now, where the hell is the money? I'm going to get in the zone. I'm going to get myself pumped up. And it doesn't matter what it is. I could drive through a luxury neighborhood and get inspired by the, by the uh, houses I go by. I can uh, check out a great boutique and look at all the beautiful things. I don't have to buy anything. I can soak up the zone, the experience, the energy of abundance and prosperity. And I can get into that yeah, baby energy. I can get curious and interested and choose to share my gifts with other people and be dedicated to helping them solve a clear problem. And maybe I can't articulate exactly what their problem is, but I can hear how they talk about their problem. And that helps me refine how I can speak to them in the future. And you just show up to serve. And when you do that, you show up to serve with your rewarding experience because you are, heck, you're helping 217,360,600 people already, just you being you. So when you show up with that dedication and that commitment, your business thrives. And don't look at how many sales did I make today? Look at how many people did I serve today? How many conversations did I have today? How many smiles did I give today? How many times did I laugh today? Look at the right criteria. The sales are an unavoidable byproduct when you're focused on the right thing. I have so many examples in my head of, of, of that is completely in line with, with all of those things. I had at one point, um, you and I both post on social media with all these various different things. And um, I have a business coach. And at one point he said, hey, I noticed something changed in, in your content. He's like, I can't tell you what it is. Something is just different. It just feels better. And I was like, I can tell you exactly what it is. Because there was one video that got a lot of views and a lot of people commented on it with questions. And I started making videos that were actually, I knew that there was another person on the end of that line that I was talking to. I was connecting. I knew I was helping somebody. I was like, all of a sudden, I'm not screaming into a void. I'm connecting with another person. And to me, one person per day was more than enough. I was joyful, skipping around. My wife is going, what happened? And I'm like, somebody asked the question. I They asked me a question. How wonderful is that? <laughs> um, it, it, those tiny little things. Did they? Did I end up selling them on something? No, but I answered a question and that's all that it, it really took. And it was finding that abundance um, it, it, in that. Um, same business coach, John Michael Morgan, uh, has taught me abundance stacking of as you go finding little bits of abundance, like I'm stuck in traffic. But if you're an entrepreneur, look at all these people that have places to go, things to do. They're spending money. They're probably going somewhere to spend money. And eventually they'll spend it with you. Uh, at some point, look at all these wonderful things. I am sure that you have some of those maybe little tips or tricks. Do you have anything around abundance that you could help us with that we can really kind of 
use to help turbo and ignite our, our discernment of abundance in the world? Yes. I love playing the I'm so happy and grateful that game. Mm. I'm so happy and grateful that I get to have a conversation with you today. I'm so happy and grateful that people are going to watch this and listen to this and really get value out of it. I'm already getting choked up. I'm so happy and grateful for my hot tea on a chilly day. I'm so happy and grateful that it's finally raining. We so desperately need it in California. I'm so happy and grateful that the power hasn't gone off this time in the middle of our conversation the way it did last time. <laughs> there is so much that you could choose to be happy and grateful for. And when you get into that mode, it just starts to build. It starts to swell. And you create this wave of abundance and opportunity for yourself. You have to get your mindset into I'm so excited about what's about to come. You know, I don't know if you've ever watched the show America's Got Talent and they have people who perform, they do different talent things often. It's a singer and the judges give them feedback and sometimes they're voted off, but they also have this thing called a golden buzzer. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever watched one of the videos when somebody's going to get the golden buzzer just a few seconds before the golden buzzer, that poor contestant is going, huh, what, huh, what's going on? He's looking at the judges and he's all confused. He's worried. I mean, what's, what's going to happen? What, huh? And then all of a sudden they hit the golden buzzer, which means they don't have to go through all the elimination rounds. They go right to the last thing and they're guaranteed a place. And all this golden confetti comes down and everybody stands up and gives them a standing ovation. And they get a ton of great feedback from people. All this loving comes on them. You are seconds before your golden buzzer. You are in that space right now on the cliff edge of the golden buzzer. So stop beating yourself up and stop pretending that everything is going to hell in a handbasket. That's your choice. If you're choosing to focus on all the things that are not working in your life, congratulations, that's what you get to live with. Instead, you could put your attention on what is working in your life and you can celebrate the fact that you're in the vast unknown and the divine is lining up beautiful opportunities for you. You never know when you're going to stumble across the perfect meditation practice for you. Just saying. That's fair. That's that's be beautifully said. Um, <laughs> and I also really like that you're you're showing us how close it is. That feeling, totally. that, that euphoric feeling of just uh, of acceptance and love and and fulfillment, because it's not necessarily that you have to go through all the elimination rounds of uh, America's Got Talent. No, the golden buzzer is right there. It could be just yeah. seconds, and then you're you're in that feeling. And guess what? Unlike in the show, you're not limited to one golden buzzer. You can, no, you can revisit you're it not. as soon as you step away. You can get tons of them. And the other big mistake that people make is they think abundance is going to only come in in one way. Like mm. I have a job and the only way I can get abundance is with my salary. Or I have a business and the only way I can get abundance is if I get a new client in. Well, no, there's all kinds of ways that abundance can come to you. And are you exploring those and allowing those to show up and welcoming in abundance in all forms? Because all it takes is one conversation. You could have a conversation with someone who has a big audience and they love you and they love what you do. And so they put you in front of their audience. And all of a sudden you've got all these sales. You could do I had a random thing happen to me. I was dealing with my parents and in-laws with end of life issues. And I basically closed my business and my new business was not going anywhere. We were living off of savings and we had inherited some property from my parents and it really wasn't worth anything. We were going to have to pay taxes on it. It's on the other side of the coast, beautiful stuff, but not a practical decision. It was an emotional decision because my parents really wanted somebody to want it. Mm -hmm. So we wanted it. <laughs> all right we'll want it and because I was open to receiving abundance out of the blue a company approached me and offered me a bunch of money for that property enough that we could cover medical bills and yeah I mean you don't know where abundance is going to come from so stop trying to organize and control everything welcome abundance in every form imaginable and buy a lottery ticket. Why not? 
playful. Remember, the divine is playful and fun and silly. I know the logic does not stack up that you're going to win the lottery. My parents were both math professors. They hated the lottery. I'm like, forget it. I'm all over it because it's playful and it's fun and it gets me in that zone of opportunity. And what are all the great things and all the amazing people I can help when I have this abundance at my fingertips? You have it at your fingertips right now. I love that you say that it doesn't come because it's by the lottery ticket. Don't spend everything on the lottery ticket. No. But also, I think the key, a key takeaway there for me especially is that your abundance is not just about the money because no. money money is nothing. Money money is a, an illusion, not a, in the sense of money you use to buy something to get something for yourself. So you're after whatever money can get you, not the money itself. So if money is what gives you the vacation and the lovely relationship with your family, then your abundance is focusing on your lovely relationship with your family. Stop focusing on the money that's going to get you there and work on what is what is there right now. And I, I think that's the part is, and so many people talk about it, chasing the money, but it's also, I think abundance is so consistently paired together with the word money that I, I almost- Well, there's just, so many different ways to get what you want. So with your example of wanting to take some beautiful trips with your lovely family, there are a lot of people who need to be able to figure out how to travel with kids. And they struggle to find a great opportunity, a great solution. Well, you could write a blog. You could do a vlog journal about the best places to go around the world and where to stay when you've got a family, when you've got a baby, how to travel with ease. What are the tools that make it easier for you? You can get sponsors for that. People will pay you. They'll give you free accommodations to stay there and write about them and showcase what you're up to. Don't think you're too small. Don't think you're too small because honestly, it, when you've got a strong message and people, under, they, they feel you, they feel your energy, they get how you show up and they like how you show up and you're talking about something that's really relevant to them and a challenge that they have, they want to go on a great vacation with their kids too. So when you make it super easy for them to do that and you showcase all the great places they could go, all of a sudden you get to have it all. You don't have to have the money. You get to contribute you, who you are. You create that rewarding experience that delivers everything you want. Is this making sense? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I hope that's what everybody else said, right? Everybody else? Okay. <laughs> uh, I hope so. I'm abundantly envisioning my audience um, in, in that sense. We've had, we've had such a long conversation about so many different things. And I, I think, honestly... I would recommend people go back and re-listen to it because there were there were so many pearls and gold nuggets of wisdom that were dropped. Um, I probably need to go back and listen to it as well uh, for, for my own sake. If people want to learn more about you, they want to get more of these wonderful, wise things, more of the books that you're reading that I now have to get a long list of and add to my good reads. <laughs> where is the best place that people can connect with you, find you, learn more about you? Please visit my website. It is theabundancejourney.com. And on the website, you can find out more about my six-week abundance journey experience, where I take you through everything that I learned from the divine and how everything is actually lined up to help you. Uh, so that's really fun. And the other thing that you can find there is my podcast and video show, which is called The Abundance Journey. Everything in my life seems to be called The Abundance Journey because your life is a journey of abundance. That's what we're actually doing. So, yeah, I'd love to have you join me there and I'd love to connect with you. That would be a lot of fun. And everybody, like Elaine said, we'll have the we'll have the links below. But like she said, the joy is in the journey. So that's you will not only find abundance, but also a lot of joy on, on all of those things. Now, um, usually I like to ask people to any of any final words, any final thoughts. But I know that um, we are probably going to be doing some activating abundance things with you which I think is a beautiful way to kind of wrap things up because people are going, okay, I'm ready. I'm, I'm dialed in. I'm with you guys. Give me, give me something, give me a boost. What can I start with? Could you, could you tell us more, lead us through all that? Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why I encourage people to uh, watch my podcast or video show, either one, because at the end of every episode, I do a section called Activate Abundance. And I asked Stefan, can I please, please, please activate abundance at the end of our conversation? I so appreciate you. So. I want to activate abundance 
around, you pick it. What's what's a topic that we covered today that you think would be a really important one for people to just own? I feel that money is overdone. So I know that <laughs> most people are going to go with money. I, okay, I'm sure you guys can find that. I'm sure you've covered that on the podcast. I think with the pandemic and with all of the, the isolation, with the amount of social media and everything right there, I think it's so important for, we talked about our influences of our 600 friends and the relationships. So I would say, let's go about abundance in our friendships and relationships. I will show you. And it's really funny because it's, it's kind of which came first, the chicken or the egg. I want you to activate abundance in every relationship you have, including the relationship that you have with you. So I'm going to walk you through the five steps to activate abundance and model it for you as if you were talking to someone that maybe you've got a challenging relationship with, okay? Because you can turn those challenging relationships into incredibly rewarding experiences for both of you. Okay, so five-step process. Step one is gratitude. Gratitude is the doorway to everything that you want. So you can be grateful that you actually can have a conversation with this person, even though they typically drive you nuts. They're willing to take time out of their busy day to connect with you. And that energy is so interesting because other people in our world are a reflection for us. So whenever we're feeling discomfort with somebody else, it's because there's something going on inside that we need to look at. It's not actually about that other person, no matter how annoying they may be. It's something inside that's causing us to be annoyed. So I'm very grateful that they're calling my attention that I need to go inside and I need to look at what's going on there. But I want to improve the relationship right now in this moment. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to do that. That step one is gratitude. Step two is acknowledge something they're doing that you value. So I really appreciate you taking the time to get together. I love spending time with you, even though you don't. Tell them that you're grateful that you get to spend some time with them. Acknowledge something. Then appreciate the difference that it makes. You know, I know you're busy. And when you're willing to take some time to have a conversation with me, it just makes me feel really special. It makes me feel valuable. It makes me feel heard. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we do together. The fact that you're willing to spend time with me in the same room together is really special. And I value that. When they hear that, oh my gosh, they don't get that too often. I got to tell you. People don't get acknowledged or appreciated, which is step three. Sorry, step three is appreciate. Appreciate something they're doing that's making a difference. Step four is to activate abundance. There are two different ways you activate abundance. One of them is you actually take out your calendar and you schedule something. So it could be, you know what? Let's do a monthly Zoom call because I know you're really busy, but I love connecting with you. So let's just plan on doing a monthly half hour Zoom call where we can catch up and compare notes because I love where you're going. I want to support you. I want to find out what you're up to. And you know, I'd love to tell you what I'm doing too. Great. I can schedule that on a calendar. The other way is to give yourself a trigger. So when you're in a conversation with someone who is having a tough time or they're not being as generous as they could be in their comments and their thoughts, you want to trigger for yourself where you just remember, Ooh, this is an opportunity for me to activate abundance. That's all I need to do is I need to help this person feel that I'm grateful for them, that I, I can acknowledge something they're doing that is important to me. I can appreciate the difference that it's making for me. And I've got this simple little trigger that reminds me to do that. That's step four is to activate abundance with either a trigger or put it on the calendar. Step five is celebrate your progress. Rome was not built in a day. So it's really interesting to me when you acknowledge and appreciate that to me is the true meaning of being present for someone. Because you have to be paying attention to be able to point out something that they're doing and Praise it and explain why it's so valuable to you. When you do that, they feel seen and heard. That's when you're fully present for someone else. It's when they feel seen and heard. And it's such a rare thing that they're going to want it over and over and over. And over. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, what else? What else? Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Keep it coming, keep it coming, right? And so they may not be in a space where they can do that back for you. That's okay. 
you're being that channel, that conduit for them. And you can feel really good about who you are being in the moment, as well as what you are doing. Okay, so celebrate your progress and you will be amazed at the transition that you have. I had a client of mine who was struggling a bit with some of her family members. She had a brother that she was not very close to, and he started having some health issues. And we started helping her do this activate abundance process with him in every conversation that she had. And now they're incredibly close. And because she's been supporting him and encouraging him and sending a lot of good energy his way, we've sent a lot of healing energy his way, and it really does work. Yes, indeed, we are all connected, all 217,360,600 of us. We can make things happen. She now, her, her brother is now out of the hospital and doesn't have to be in very often every week. And he had some severe bone cancer, and now he's well on the mend. So- Miracles do happen, but they happen one baby step at a time. Celebrate the baby steps. You're rocking it. You didn't know this. You're rocking it. I love it. And I I think even to your point about the healing part is so much research has been done into the healing power of community and the belonging and that your ability to connect and reach out. It was very, I'm thinking uh, the amount of time that people have ever said, hey, uh, not just that I, you know, I acknowledge that you're here, but I I appreciate you taking the time and not in the way that networkers sometimes do that. I know you're no, very no, busy. No. I appreciate you taking the time. Or that people are like, I really appreciate the way you show up, that you have such a passionate, you, Elaine, have such a passionate <laughs> way about you. And I, when you get passionate, everybody knows. And it's beautiful. <laughs> um, it's the way it should be. Because if you're passionate and nobody knows, are you passionate? <laughs> um, when you're trying to communicate that you are passionate, it makes me kind of wonder. So I, I, I was going, I don't think most people ever have maybe even heard that of, of that, that kind of level of gratitude in those kinds of conversations. And it can really reinvigorate, rejuvenate and, and really yeah. heal us because a connection and community, I mean, that's, it's beautiful and wonderful. Thank you for those yeah. awesome tips, guys. If you want more of those, I mean, they're at the end of every episode of, of her podcast, go. Um, and you won't have to wait over an hour for, for the end of the five minutes. <laughs> Those episodes are, are shorter. So there you go. It will be, it will be even better. Um, with that, I will, I will practice the, the I will practice uh, step one and I will say, Elaine, thank you. Thank you so much. My gratitude for you being here. This was, I knew it was going to be good and it, you blew me out of the water. This was absolutely <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really enjoyed chatting with you. I always do. I hope you got so much from that episode. I hope that you followed along for Activating Abundance because it's so true. I hope you go to that podcast and listen to her podcast. The episodes are shorter so you can really digest this and really start moving your life in the right direction because that's what we're here for, right? The love to move in all aspects of that word moving and getting away from stagnation. If I could help the world and I helped you and other people and you want to help me in return, uh, I would love for you to share, go on and review the podcast and Apple podcast. That's really what helps all podcasters. By the way, if you have other podcast friends, do that for them. It it really, we, we live and die by that stuff as podcasters. And as always, my friends, until next time.